Welcome to the Think Orange podcast, where we want to encourage and equip leaders like you who are investing in the faith and future of the next generation. I'm your host, Dave Adamson, and in this season of the podcast, we're interviewing some of the humans who will be part of Orange Conference 2022 this April. We'll talk about what it means to be human, how churches can better care for the humans in their community, and some of the new things happening at Orange Conference 2022. And today, I'm so excited for you to hear this conversation I had recently with Dan Scott. Dan is the director of 252 Kids and Preteen Curriculum and the author of the book, Caught In Between, Engage Your Preteens Before They Check Out. We broke down everything you need to know about Orange Conference Digital and how you can make the most of your experience while tuning in from home. I can't wait for you to listen to this conversation. So let's check it out. Hey, Dan Scott, it is so great to have you on the Think Orange podcast. How are you, mate? Good. It is good to see your face. It's so good to see your face as well. We text now, each other a lot. We do. We but don't do this a lot. So we need to fine. do this more often, Dan. Um, we should. We which, should. It's interesting it's, that it's you bring that. It's just the fact that it's like six o'clock in the morning for you and it's not for me. So <laughs> It's ridiculous, right? But hey, that's a really good segue, I actually think, because, okay. you know, we we have known each other for many, many years. Uh, we we met have. in person and we we actually met on an orange event, which again is, is pretty pertinent to what we're going to be talking about today. But we've <laughs> yes, maintained this strong relationship literally just digitally, right? Because digital yeah. enhances physical relationships. So we've had this unique opportunity to experience that in real life. And yeah, we've got sure. you on the podcast today specifically because we want to talk about how Orange can enhance physical relationships using digital technology with uh, our Orange audience, right? At Orange Conference this yes. year. Yes. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. You know, it's 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 one of those things. I think I was on talking about conference, what we were excited about uh, a few episodes ago, not yeah. really sure where this falls in, but but. Um, this is like, you know, in 2020 when the world shut down and they were like, oh, what are we going to do? And they're like, well, let's go online. And everyone's like, okay. And no one knew what they were doing. Uh, we actually, it's like, it, we pulled it off, like yeah. kind of sort of, and, and yeah. uh, people liked it. And, and we thought, you know, we really need to continue that yeah. as part of our orange strategy when it comes to events and conferences and making sure that leaders get what they need, because the world is still complex. Like it, it hasn't yeah. just because we're like, you know, this farther away from like the real height of the pandemic, it is still a very complex world and digital and, and in person, they're going to be hybrid for a while, which I know that you are very excited yes. about. Yes. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah. 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 Like I think for, for conference uh, to have a digital experience is going to be huge. Yeah, so just to catch our podcast listeners up, we've got Orange Conference coming up at the end of April, um, but we're really excited to also be offering the, the Orange Conference Digital, which is a way really for people right around the whole world to experience OC in a brand, well, I was going to say a brand new way. It's not brand new anymore. To your point, Dan, the things that we learned over the past couple of years by doing Orange Conference online and, and the things we learned as an organization, the things really the church learned about enhancing yeah. that online experience we're going to be bringing to Orange Conference. So this is really for, you know, people who are maybe still uncomfortable joining a large crowd in person, which is which is totally Totally okay. understandable. Totally yeah. understandable. It's also for people like me who are international and maybe it's too hard for a bunch of different reasons to get to Atlanta in person. Although I will be in Atlanta in person because I'm hosting the Orange Conference Digital. Um, but it's also for people, you know, in a lot of situations, and you know this firsthand, Dan, a lot of situations, people just can't take a week off work. So we want to offer this in a digital format so that we can address, you know, so people in all of those categories can access Orange Conference. I wanted to ask you, I know that, um, for example, you've recorded a digital specific breakout. Is that right? I did. Yes. Yeah, so a breakout that I'm giving in person uh, at, at the conference, I recorded today, actually like two hours ago, uh, for the digital experience, you know, which is fun. What I loved doing the digital experience back in uh, 2020, because you, we had this like, you get, you get this Q&A yep. that you don't get when you're in the room, uh, you know, doing the, the big 45 minute breakout. So 
yeah, I recorded that uh, this afternoon, and yeah. the, it, it was really fun. It was, it, well, I'm excited for it. Well, you just touched on, obviously, I want to circle back in a minute and, and talk about what okay. your breakout was about, but you, ta- you sure. touched on something really significant and important there, which was one of our learnings from doing Orange Conference completely online over the last couple of years, is that uh, that, that pre-recorded stuff is great, but what enhanced that pre-recorded stuff is the live and and I, I mean exclusive really Q and A's yeah. with the speakers that happen straight afterwards. So the this is something that in, in many ways I think the digital audience is going to get a, 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 almost an enhanced version of the conference. Oh yeah, because, no, it's bonus. It's, yeah. it's definitely bonus for sure. So they'll be able to. So if somebody's watching digitally, they'll be able to watch you present that content, which is essentially the same core content. But then straight afterwards, they'll have access to a live Q and A where literally they can, you know, type their question into a chat, and you will call them out by name. <laughs> like if I ask yeah, a yeah. question, "Hey Dan, where did you buy that shirt?" You can say, "Well, Dave, I got this shirt at." Fill in the gap of whatever that is. Um, but that's that's the piece that I'm most excited about. And the reason I'm excited about, Dan, I'd love your thoughts on this, especially because you experienced this over the last couple of years. I'm a yeah. big believer that when it comes to online, we've always been told that content is king. But I am a yeah. big believer that actually context is king. Mm-hmm. So you've pre-recorded this content, which, you know, yeah, yeah. is awesome. You've made this content, but if you really want to make a difference, you have to apply that to the context. And this is where the Q and A's come in, right? Because people mm-hmm. can contextualize and say, Hey, Dan, I like what you said, but how does For that sure. apply to me? Because in my church, there's only two people on staff and how exactly. am I supposed to play that out? So, so can you speak to that? Yeah, like, you, no, for it? sure. You know, I, I the Q and A allows individuals to make the content personal for sure. Um, you know, and, and when you've done a breakout before in person and, and for sure, a few people hang back and they, they ask some questions, you know, to do some of that contextualization of the content. But, but a lot of times the questions that they're asking are, it's, it's pretty certain that someone else in the room has a similar question about, but they just don't, they either have to rush out to something else or they don't feel comfortable coming up to a speaker and, and asking that question where this yeah. in the digital space, because the question is typed and there's a moderator and it's super relational, uh, you know, there's, there's a chance for a lot of people to hear other people's questions, which ends up sparking. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, you know, with like curriculum or any speaker, like I speak from my point of view, uh, we try the best that we can to put it into a broad you know, context, but again, like you said, people have their own stories and are, yeah. you know, living in their specific worlds and yeah. they need, you know, a little bit more nuanced help uh, yeah. for, for how, you know, to ab- apply what they're learning. And yeah, this is a great chance to do that. It was, it was actually my favorite part of the 2020 conference was getting to like hang out with all the people that just watched it. Uh, which, yeah. You know, like you said, it's enhanced, like it the yeah. It's an experience that people coming in person, you know, don't get. Yeah, we've really tried to make it like those little, like you said, like it's the the people who line up after a breakout who, you know, don't have to rush off or or, or are extroverted yeah. so they don't mind coming up and asking <laughs> yeah, questions. Exactly. But I, I feel like it's also the hallway conversations. You know, when you walk yeah, around, when you yes. walk around the hallways, you, yes. you get that opportunity. people are chatting to each other yes. as well. That's yeah. the thing that I love. So we've cr- tried to recreate that digital hallway, if you like, uh, by creating yeah, that opportunity. That. This is where I think it's enhanced. Now, again, I want to come back to your content specifically because I just want to give people a little bit of a sneak peek into what you're sharing. But I, I also just want to make sure that I cover this off. Um, people who yeah. watch online, um, you know, who watch the Orange Conference Digital are going to get every single main session. Now, that's kind of new. When we've done the conference in the past mm-hmm. in the arena, we've only done yeah. one, maybe two of the main mm-hmm. uh, auditorium sessions, but this year they're going to get all of them. Plus, they're going to get all this additional bonus content such as, I want to I ask you this, the Seriously Night, if you've never been to yeah. uh, Orange Conference before, the Seriously Night is just this fun, all-in barrel of yeah. laughs. Um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a combination of like a stand-up comedy concert <laughs> yep. and a live taping of Saturday Night Live with yeah. a bunch of music. Like it's kind of this like cool hybrid sort of thing where we just, 
I, I love that it's called seriously night because it's it's the moment where we can not take ourselves seriously. Yeah, you know, which we is call just it really great. We call it seriously night, and sometimes you could read that on paper and think that it's like, oh, this is a serious business, but it's more like seriously, like it's more like yeah. that sort of seriously, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a chance for us, you know, to make fun of ourselves, uh, to you know, and like the our hangups, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, in ministry, and yeah, it, it's just a chance to like laugh, right? And I, I think after the past two years, that it'll be like two and as you know, two yeah. and change. By the time we get there, I think everyone will be very ready to laugh uh, again. And uh, I know the guys that are writing a bunch of the content and. I got it. Like, there's some really, good, there's some really good stuff. There's, there's some good stuff happening. So. It's just that. Yeah. It's just that release. It's always been right. That's just that release yeah. valve of, oh, okay, mm-hmm. we we don't have to take ourselves too seriously. I can imagine yeah. that the release valve is going to be under a lot of pressure after the last couple yeah. of years. But again, oh, this yeah, is something sure. that we've never shown. Uh, stream. We've never mm-hmm. streamed this session. We we always made yeah. it an in person only. But this year, we're, we're actually going to be uh, streaming that. So I'm looking forward to that. Plus, also, there's all this uh, additional content, including 20 breakouts, of which yours is one. Now, again, just for our podcast listeners who are going to be watching Orange uh, Conference Digital, just to let you know, there are going to be 20 different breakouts and people are going to have access to them, not just live as they go to air or anything along those lines. Yeah. You're also going to get them to watch to watch them on video on demand, which we all know what video on demand is now because, you know, everybody's basically watched all of Netflix. <laughs> At the end of Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. We, we came to the end of Netflix over the past two years. But Dan, I want to talk about your, uh, your breakout yeah. specifically. What did you record today? What was your content about? Uh, so my content, uh, the, the, the topic uh, has to do with helping kids have a resilient faith. So it's the tensions that we hold uh, as we're creating curriculum in, in, at Orange, uh, both in kids and students, that help lead kids towards a resilient faith. And uh, kind of the big question we're asking is, how do we ensure kids have something to hold on to when, not if, questions yeah. and doubts show up? Uh, and so how do we do what we do at Orange, but that you can do right wherever your ministry yeah. setting is? Uh, that, you know, what are those kind of those things that you, you hold in tension? And so um, we have, I have a, a set of them. We're going to cover four of them um, at four sets of tensions that, that we work on uh, in the, in the digital breakout. Yeah. And then uh, the Q and a afterwards will allow them to like contextualize like, okay, well, how do I think about someone who's coming for the first time and someone who's been there forever. Like, how do we, you know, hold those two things in tension? And, and yeah. so, um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. it. It's definitely things that we have learned, especially in the past uh, couple of years, um, as, uh, you know, you can't go on Twitter or social media without someone talking about uh, their their faith and, and rethinking it and reimagining yeah. it. And, you know, how do we help kids? We can't prevent that, but how do we help kids navigate that yeah. and navigate that well yeah that's, yeah great, so we're excited yeah yeah dude that's such a great topic and, and as you said it's so relevant to what people are experiencing yeah. today uh, I, based on all the research that's what's cool about the breakouts that uh they're choosing for uh the digital you know the 20 that they're going to include like yeah. they they have been carefully curated orange leaders has gone through and said hey what are going to be some of the topics that everyone is going to need, you know, to, to handle and, and deal with and think about. And um, what's so great in getting, you know, all of them yeah. uh, is great because usually you only get, you know, you can see like three or four things, but you're, you get all of them now. And yeah, uh, for your team. Yeah, that is definitely the other bonus, I guess, uh, of watching the conference digitally is that um, you, you really, when you're in on site, you only get to go to one or two different conference uh, breakouts in between sessions. Yeah. So you don't get as many, yet, or certainly don't get as access to as many. So if, you'd yeah. like, if you're <laughs> listening to the podcast and you want to find out what those 20 breakouts are, you can go to the orangeconference.com forward slash digital. That's the orangeconference.com. 
www.thinkandgrowthinstitute.com forward slash digital. I also want to let you know, uh, podcast listeners, that if you want to grab tickets today for Orange Conference Digital, go to theorangeconference.com, theorangeconference.com. Hey, Dan, when it comes to the main sessions, because we're going to be showing yeah. all of the main sessions uh, online this year, um, what are some of the things that you're most looking forward to from uh, those main auditorium sessions? I always love the the discussions. Um, you know, it's one thing to hear, you know, a great communicator share their message, but uh, so much happens when Reggie and Kristen pull up, uh, you know, four or five people and they just have a conversation about about something that's happening. I, yeah. I think the the beauty of Orange Conference is when we get to, like you said, those hallway conversations, right? When you get to, to talk with people and you get to hear from diverse perspectives and diverse settings. And uh, we, we're we all trying to make it through and we can learn from each other. And so they model that in how and who they bring to the table and the conversations that they facilitate um, are are always my favorite, favorite part because, yeah. you, you know, you sort of think, oh man, I can't wait to hear you know, this speaker or that speaker. And, and yes, those are incredible. Uh, but it's those, those moments around the table that just feel really authentic and yeah. feel vulnerable where, you know, someone's like, Oh man, like, this is my story. Like, this is, this is what happened to me. And it's not some polished message. It's just, this is my heart. Right. And, and they just have to say it. And, yeah. and so uh, I'm very excited for those. And I'm glad yeah. that, people get to hear those because those are things you you don't even you've never been able to hear before uh in the digital experience yeah and we've got some uh there's a great lineup of all the speakers uh who are going to be speaking in those main sessions uh you know everybody from obviously our own reggie joiner and Kristen ivy but also uh i gotta get this right cara pal i always say cara pal and she always corrects me Kara Powell, uh, John Acuff, Ryan Leake, and Darius Daniels is somebody who I'm super looking forward to because I think yeah. he's one of these yeah, he's phenomenal. intelligent yeah. speakers around. Um, so yeah, normally we don't get access to that on the online stuff, but this year we're going to be giving it. I'm really looking forward to that aspect of it as well. And in between some of those main sessions online, we're also going to be doing some exclusive Q&As with some of these main mm -hmm. speakers to contextualize things as well. It's one of the things that I love most about hosting mm -hmm. the digital experience is that yes. I get the and opportunity. You're so good at that. I have been interviewed by you many, many times. <laughs> And that uh, that is always a highlight of Orange Conference for me is getting to sit at the table with, with you uh, and, and just talk about whatever we feel like for for you know twenty. Minutes, I always, uh, which, is, which is always fun. I always appreciate that too, Dan. I think we probably have probably a little bit too much fun around. <laughs> that side of things and <laughs> we needed to rein that in a little bit. Um, talk to me, Dan, about uh, and talk to our listeners about Zoom fatigue. This is a real thing that people have been experiencing, right? Um, yeah, and we've done our is. best as a, as a team to mitigate that when it comes to uh, the online experience. But can you talk to us a little bit about, like, how have you experienced Zoom fatigue? I mean, we still use Zoom. We're still using Zoom for meetings, yeah. you know, because not everyone... Uh, can make it. And now that we have it, now that, now that the tool is available and we have yeah. access, it's like, Hey, I'm, I can't make it. Or, you know, like this yeah. is how I can do it. And, and, you know, so there's part of it that there is something about being in a room together. Yeah. Uh, however, I will say this in spite of sometimes when I just want to, Hey, can I get everyone in the room? Uh, the one thing that's really been great is that Zoom has allowed us to have more people at our table. Yeah. Uh, it's with regards to how we create curriculum, we're able to get people from all over the country that we can't fly in, but we would love to have their voice as we're reading through a script or we're thinking about bottom lines and key questions yeah. for curriculum. And so I feel like it's worth fighting through the fatigue in order for the magic to happen with the people that you get to have, you know, around your table now, um, yeah. that the technology allows and thinking about orange conference digital, you're like, I can't, I can't even think about going into another zoom meeting. However, I feel like this is one of those moments where it's, it's that I'm going to fight through this 
because on the other side are, are people I wouldn't normally get to connect with yeah. uh, in, in a room. Yeah. And the conversations that you're going to have in, in this are, are going to be super helpful. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't like to promise things, but I think they will be super helpful yeah. uh, as you go about the next you know, season of, uh, of ministry following yeah. the conference. Yeah, and I I would love to just allay anybody's fears about who 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 suffer from this real thing of Zoom fatigue. That yeah. Orange Conference Digital, we are not going to be just doing all of it on Zoom. There's going to be so many yeah. different elements to it that will break it up. So you're going to have those main sessions from inside mm-hmm. the auditorium where you're going to actually mm-hmm. get to see, um, you know, some yeah. of the best communicators in the world when it comes to family ministries expressing what's on the cutting yeah. edge. So you're going to get to experience that. Then you're going to get the uh, beautifully uh, done uh, breakout sessions that are not only shot beautifully, but they're also uh, extremely important and significant uh, information uh, and teaching around areas that directly impact church leaders, no matter what the size of your church. But then to have that ability to then uh, have this sort of interaction with somebody who's, you know, mm-hmm. at, at the top of their game or somebody who's got a new way of thinking around how mm-hmm. to do family ministries and to ask them co- questions directly, that's where yeah. it becomes significant. I think a lot of Zoom fatigue um, sets in there, and this is certainly my experience, is when you have to sit in a, a staff meeting or, or a team meeting, and you're basically just sitting there consuming information. We don't yes. want that. No, we Orange want Conference to be interactive. Digital. We sure. want the interactive. So that's where that's what I'm most excited about because, you know, Dan, I, I told you this just before we hit record, right? I was talking to church leaders in Australia today about uh, you, your content, and especially your book, um, and and yeah. was telling them the significance of, of your book and y- your uh, experience, but they don't necessarily get the opportunity to sit in this sort of conversation like I yeah. do. But what yeah. I love about Orange Conference Digital is that people are going to have the opportunity to literally sit in front of you and ask you questions and you speak directly into their context. How much do you as a communicator enjoy that process of, you know, doing something you don't get the chance to opportunity to do on an everyday basis, but to speak to, to church leaders from around the world, specifically into their context. How, how, how important is that for you? Yeah. I mean, that's super significant. I, you know, as the, um, you know, overseeing uh, the, the elementary curriculum, we were trying to figure out, you know, how can we best serve the world? You know, yeah. we, we know we have churches all over the world right now and uh, we do our best. But when I get the chance to have a conversation and hear from leaders on the ground, you know, using or doing the best they can you yeah. know with, with with what they have like it, it's inspiring honestly because we get so stuck in like you know i live in atlanta and this is where i live and this is my <laughs> context but yeah. the truth is like the world is so diverse and uh it's rich with with meaning and culture and and for us yeah. to be able to learn from that um i end up learning more than i think the people i'm having a conversation with i yeah. it's it is a mutually beneficial convert it, it's always mutually beneficial like uh, that's what's so exciting about those i mm. um i wish we could do it for every breakout you know that we do yeah. i wish we could do it in person somehow um yeah. figure out how to make that happen because it's 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 great for me because you just make content yeah. but making sure that that content translates yeah. into another person's experience is is really what the point is yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know so you yeah. know, to make sure that that's happening is is significant for sure. Yeah, you hear a lot of theater people often say that, you know, actors and actresses say that they, they love to do theater because they get that immediate feedback from the audience whether or not something's working. And this is what I feel like. Um, you know, we, we we will talk ad nauseum about the fact that Orange Conference Digital is going to be uh, just as good an experience as being there in person, right? But I think for us as communicators, we get the opportunity to get that instant feedback by having that Q&A afterwards to see how the content yeah. landed, to see the impact yeah. that's made. I know for me personally, when I do this sort of thing, I learn as much 
um, as I, I, you know, as I hope that other people have learned from the stuff that I've shared by what people feed back to me and the information, because mm-hmm. there are so many smart yeah. people in so many churches sure. around the world. And so we get the opportunity to have that two way dialogue rather than having that one way, you know, I've got the microphone and you all sit and yes. listen. No, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. No, um, for sure. I so also just, love like the improv of it. Like the fact that like, I don't know what you're going to ask. <laughs> and to be honest to say, like, I think there was this one moment in, in at the 2021 where uh, I was like, I don't know if I have an answer for that. You know, like, yeah. I, and, and just to be honest and say, wow, that is something I haven't considered. Does someone else in the chat, do you have an experience with this? And then hand off the, yeah. you know, hand off the proverbial microphone to someone in the audience who's, yeah. you know, chatting away and is able to say, oh, yeah, I. I, I went through that. I, I experienced that, and this is what we learned. And and so we're we're really facilitating. We're no longer speaking. We're facilitating a conversation, and and that's exciting. Mm. That's the key. We're facilitating a conversation. I absolutely love that. One of my favorite parts about uh, the Orange Conference Digital and Partially is, is exactly that thing. And so we've gone to great lengths to make sure that everybody who experiences Orange Con- Conference digitally gets to be part of that uh, conversation. Dan, I've got one more question for you. Just before okay. I do, I just want to let everybody know again that if you want to find out more about Orange Conference Digital, you can go to the orangeconference.com forward slash digital, the the orangeconference.com forward slash digital. Um, Once you land on that page, Dan, once people land on that page, they're going to see that our our theme for this year is Mm -hmm. be human. So I want to just close out by asking you, Dan, what does it mean in 2022 um, at the end of, well, hopefully the tail end of a pandemic, what does it mean to you to be human? And because I'm going to ask you one question, but it's actually two. And okay. how, does, how does the Capital C Church help uh, people in their community be more human? This is a, this is a good question. Um, I, I have lots of thoughts and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to shrink my thoughts down because I know we're at the tail end of this, but um, uh, th- there's so many reasons why it's important. I, I think mm. one of the big reasons is, you know, when I look at our, yeah, I have four kids. Um, yeah. a lot of a lot of people know that about me if you know me. And I've seen them work through the pandemic. I've seen them yeah. try to do school. I've seen them try to figure out like my one son had to like apply to college in the middle of the pandemic and yeah. you know, go to college, you know, and and just see them sort of then also though question people's response to the pandemic and and see like people fighting over like things that like and these really things that we should be fighting about. And, and, and there's just this element of, have we become so, you know, you're a social media person. Have we become so connected, but not personal anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, we are connected, but we are not, con- we are not connecting and we are not personal and we mm. do not know each other. And I, I think in being human, it's, it's seeing the image of God in that person that I want to have an argument. It's seeing beyond the avatar on Twitter, it's seen yeah. beyond the Facebook post to say, you are, that represents an actual human being with a lived experience yeah. that informs who they are and what they're doing and what they're saying right now. Yeah. And because of that, how I treat them matters. Yeah. Right. And, and that is what, that that's, that's why Jesus came, right? Like, yeah. it's like, yes, Jesus came to rescue and save us and all of that. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay that, but I also want to say Jesus also came to teach us how to be human, Mm. uh, to live and be fully alive. Yeah. Uh, One of my, my favorite verses, uh, you know, in John and, um, we have the Beatitudes and we have, you know, the Sermon on the Mount and we have like, he cared as much about how you live now as, as much as, where you're going to spend, you know, your yeah. eternity. And, and so while we're here and we are human, yeah. you know, I'm just excited that we get to wrestle with what that really means to be fully alive followers of Jesus, image bearers, humans yeah. you know, on planet earth. So it, yeah. it, I think we're going to have a lot of good conversations. Yeah, Dan, I love that. I love that thing that you said in there that technology allows us 
to be connected, but in a lot of ways, we're not connecting because we're going to our opposite, you know, we're going to our opposite corners. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. We talk a lot about echo chambers like yeah. all the time you and I do. And yeah, yeah. yeah, we need to get out of those. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're connected, but we're not connecting. I love that. And, and, and really, I agree with you. That's what it means to be human is to get out of our opposite corners and come into the middle where, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's messy. But isn't, isn't this why Jesus came to, to pull us into the middle? Because he came to step into the middle and he's calling us to step into the middle where it is a bit messy, but that's where we're connecting. I love that. I'm going to probably tweet that a little bit later on. We're connected, <laughs> but are we connecting? That's what it means to be human. Dan Scott, thank you so much. It has been so You're great to welcome. catch up with you, mate. I appreciate all of your insights as always. And again, uh, the orangeconference.com forward slash digital to get your tickets and to find out more about what's happening uh, during the Orange Conference for those people online. Dan, thank you so much. I'll see you very soon. Sounds good. Now, wasn't that an amazing conversation? If you enjoyed listening to this episode, would you consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcast? Just like Caleb did when he wrote, this is hands down the best family ministry podcast out there. It covers anyone leading ministries from birth through high school. The topics, interviews, and messages are relevant and great. It's also fun, which makes it even better. Thanks so much for that review, Caleb. Our podcast team loves reading every review that comes in. We also love seeing all of our podcast listeners and viewers at Orange Conference. So I want to personally invite you to attend Orange Conference 2022, either in person or digitally. You can still get tickets. Just go to theorangeconference.com to save your seat for an Orange Conference like you've never seen before. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Think Orange podcast.